Hello and welcome to Behold the Land Presents. I'm Chris Shelton, your host. I want to thank you for tuning in. Our topic of study today is entitled Digital Currency, A Sign of the End. The Bible predicts a time in the future when those who remain faithful to God in all things will not be able to buy or sell unless, unless they have the mark of the beast, which is something we do not want. Have you ever wondered how this control of our money could even be possible? Under the currency systems of the world as it is now, it isn't. But what if, what if all the monies of the world could be digitally controlled in a central banking data facility? What if governments could access and control how much money you have, how much money you can make, and even how much money you can spend, or even perhaps when your money is allowed to be spent? Digital currency is here and gaining momentum with world influencers such as Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates, who have been recorded as mentioning the need to reset the world's various currencies to a digital money system. Today, Pastor Kenny Shelton is going to look at the other side, as it were, of this digital coin and see if perhaps this is a true sign, possibly, of the end. But first, let's visit 3ABN and listen to a song that is entitled More About Jesus as played by Adrian T. Wesney Jr. on the piano. Hello and welcome once again to Behold the Lamb Ministries. We are glad 
that you have chosen to spend this time with us. I know, based upon the Word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, something will be said, something will be done that will draw you closer to Him. Maybe help you see the hour that we're living in. This is not a time to be playing games. This is not a time to just, you know, well, you know, sitting on the fence. We've got to get one side or the other. We might as well just do it by the grace of God. And He's going to help us through to, to decipher a lot of things that are happening in the world today. Remember, a lot of people can't see what's taking place because the Bible is very clear on this thing. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. So a lot of times you take something very simple to some people and they'll say, I don't understand, because it's spiritual. And only by having the power of the Holy Spirit living in the life, we're able to, as a decipher, line upon line, precept upon precept. Today we're going to be talking about digital currency, uh, dash a sign of the end. Could it be? Very possible it could be, but if not, let's look because the Bible has something to say about it. But always, again, we thank you for your card, your letter, your support, everything that you do for this ministry. You are a blessing, and I've often said I may not be able to meet you in this life, but I'd sure like to spend eternity with you. What a privilege, what a treat that will be. We get a little foretaste of that many times when we go to ASI meetings and, you know, general conference conference meetings or whatever, evangelistic meetings we have, and we're, and we're able to meet people that, uh, you know, they might see us, but we don't see them, but we're able to meet them for the very first time, and man, what a blessing that is, especially when they look at you and say, you know what, we pray for you every day. Thank you for that. Now, would you allow me to pray for you and for certainly myself as before the message? Let's pray. I'm going to kneel. Loving Father in heaven, I thank you for the promises you left to us in your word. I thank you that I didn't have to just come up here by myself to represent myself. It has nothing to do with me. I have nothing good which to offer your people today, but I stand in the light of, of Calvary based upon Bible principle and, and the prophecy that tells us these things are here, that Jesus is coming soon, that we need to make those choices and decisions right now. We need to be strengthened for this hour that we're about to go through Help us, O oh Lord, we pray through the power of thy spirit. May our minds and hearts now be stayed upon thee. Lord, may we not worry about what's taking place this week. May we not worry about maybe whether it be good, whether it be bad. But may we just focus and stay in, in tune with you that you may speak to us words of life and encouragement. Bless, we pray to this end, and we're going to thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, I want us to re we, we must be, get this squared away in our minds, at least I believe we do, that you know, people say, well, the world's going to continue to go on, things are going to be smooth, and things are going to continue to go on. The world, Bible, when we read it, actually it predicts in a lot of different places, the uh, book of Revelation chapter 18, there's going to come a time when the economy is going to collapse. And wisdom, I think, today is those of you who, listen to the news and you watch things that are happening and you have to decipher a lot of different things I understand and go through it and sort it all out. But, you know, it, it could be to the point to where the bottom is going to fall out of things financially. Our economy will not continue on the way that it's going. Does that make sense? It can't because of what we are doing and how we are doing it. It's making matters worse. Now, you can go into all of that about you know, big spending and throwing out money and printing money, have nothing to back it up, and inflation is horrible, and no gas and oil, and we don't have what we need. This all contributes to what we're talking about. You can only print so much money and give out so much money, and then what? And could it be to the point right now that we're looking at that even the governments of the world are looking at, they're so far in debt. The United States of America is so far in debt, we really can't even pay the interest on our, our money, loans. You know, we, we can't pay the interest anymore. They said that many years ago. They said when we get about, what was 18 trillion or whatever, well, we can't even pay the interest. We're way over that now. So something dramatic, something big could take place, Right? And then we need to be aware of that because it will affect you. Oh, I've got savings. Wonderful. Oh, I've got, you know, 401. Oh, wonderful. I've got, you know, be careful with all of that. You know, the Lord is our shield and our buckler. And God is the one who's going to take care of it. It's not going to be your pocketbook because that pocketbook can be taken away a lot quicker than you've put it all together. It took you years to do it, but it can be taken and disappear overnight. Ask some people in the last several years that didn't happen. 
James chapter 5, 1 through 6. The Bible, I love it. The Bible says, Go to now ye rich men. Who are we talking to here? Yeah. Well, we had one that said he, he thinks he knows. The Bible said, Go to now ye rich men. Now, you know, of course, in the United States of America, a lot of the world considers us as, as rich people, even if we don't have much. It has a whole lot more than they have. But the principle is here that we need to listen to very carefully. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Interesting. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were a fire. You have heaped, notice this, treasures together for what? Somebody say the last time or the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which as if you kept back by. Notice this, in the world today there's a lot of fraud. A lot of fraudulent people going, a lot of fraudulent acts, things that are happening. It's crying out. The cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. Five, you have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed, what? The just, and he doth not resist you. Heavy language, I realize in here, take a lot of time to go through all that. We could spend all of our time just on that. But I think as we look at this digital currency as a sign of the end, we might say something like this, the buck stops here. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, somebody said, Charlie, hey, the buck stops here. And I'm literally saying, your buck may stop here in the very near future. There is a plan. And I look at it, if I have cash in my wallet, cash to me is freedom. In, in the way that it's going to change in the near future. A certain amount of freedom, you can kind of buy what you want to buy. And we'll see that when this is transferred around, that you will not be able to buy what you really want to buy. You'll not have the freedom that you want with your money. It's going to be, as it were, owned and operated by another source. Biden says this, in case you've kind of been in a little cave or something for the last few weeks... I've talked about this for, I'm wanting to say 20 years, 25 years longer. And when I would mention New World Order, people would get a little bit bent, out of shape. Really, you said New World Order. They said, oh, you, are, you, can't, you can't go that far. Conspiracy now, New World Order. We realized back at George Bush Sr., the president, he mentioned it, didn't he, years ago, New World Order. It goes back into, into the 40s. They mentioned about New World Order coming. There's been a plan for a long time that the world will not continue the way that it has been going. There's been sinister plans behind the scene that take hours and hours and hours to go through it. it, it we need to do homework. We need to do some reading on it. But President Biden himself he said, you know, the new world order, the United States must lead the new world order. Did those of you who saw that, did, 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 he, did he mince words? No. He never minced words. He made it very, very clear we're in a new world order now. That means things have changed. You say, well, not too many things have changed. We need to get our head out of the sand. Things are changing daily. And they're not for the good. They're not for the, you know, really the good of, of, of the Christian. My freedom of speech, my freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, freedom of choice is being taken every day. And we need to rise up against that. Cashless society. What kind of a society would that be? The advocates of this cashless society want to funnel everything into just one system it's interesting to be controlled by them i wonder why right think about it just everything get this new system going and but now instead of everybody kind of funneling their own way we'll funnel it in just one direction here the Illuminists, you could call them, Illuminati. We said that years ago. Had a big map, and people were involved in that. And, and we were basically told, don't, don't show that anywhere. Don't put that on TV. People are going to think you're nuts. 
Well, it's happened. It's, it's talked about. We've heard so much about Big Brother, have we not? You know, of wanting in on your, your life. Now, I mention these things because it, it's going to, it's going to, it affects you and it affects me and it affects my relationship with Christ. It's going to affect choices that we're going to make for eternity or not for eternity. And to be a little more aware of these things might help us. The economy, the, we call it the, the new world, leaders of the new world order. They know this for sure, that it's hard to control a world unless you control the cash. Does that make sense? You can't control the world if you don't control the cash. So somehow, have you ever been wondering over the years, a lot of changing of the money, a lot of money changing has been going on. Your, your 20s and your 50s and your $100 bills, and now they have different markings and different things on that. And they say, well, they're getting old. There's reasons for all of this stuff that's taking place. We need to be very well aware of these things. Let me just say to me, this one of many, one real purpose for the new currency is to extinguish, notice this, financial privacy. It's to get rid of They don't want you to have financial privacy. If you're like I am, I don't want everybody to know what I'm doing. If I write a $10 check or a 10 cent check, you know what I'm saying? That's my business. That's your business. You don't want to know. They're wanting to extinguish that in this new, when the new currency comes out. That's not going to be possible. Bring an end to cash totally. Usher in what we call a, a cashless society where every, where every transaction is recorded. That's interesting. The amount of money that you have is strictly controlled. Hmm. I thought you should control that. But under the new system and currency, it's not controlled by you. The new world economic order is one of three phases. We won't get into it, but three things it's very important in, in this new world order movement. For, for first is the economic order. Next is the political order. The next is, listen, religious order. Interesting how religion is playing a part in this new order of things. Many people call a lot of time, you hear a lot about, and we've neglected a lot of time about, oh, the, the great reset. What's well, somebody telling you when you reset? That means you're going to, they want you to start over. Is that not right? Those of you who work with the power panels and uh, breaker boxes and everything, you know when the breaker flick kicks, you go do what? You just don't go and flip one way. You have to hit it the opposite way. Isn't that right? Reset. Boom. And then kick it back in. And by that time, you say different things will be taking place. James talks about it globally. You realize, could there be a, just another thing that they're wanting to change some things around a little bit? Because too many people, they say, are, are, are beating the government on paying taxes. They're losing billions of dollars every year. And to be able to change things out just a little bit, they're going to be able to keep tabs on that, and it won't happen. They're estimating that's over 427, and some go as high as 600 billion in taxes each year are lost. And the government right now would sure like, the governments would like, sure like to have that. I'm not trying to criticize, condemn, bring it up. I just, these are facts that are out there that you can look at and say, oh my. This unpaid taxes bring these lawmakers to a point they have to make some decisions. They have, they have to uh, decide whether they're going to uh, raise the deficit or if they're going to lower the spending on maybe many important projects that need to be spent on or they're going to raise taxes and that's what we all hate we don't like it I don't like it when they raise my taxes <laughs> some will get that the rest of you won't but maybe tomorrow you will you know what I'm talking about they want to do it because of lost revenue, and they're trying to figure out how that they can curb that and keep you from paying a lot of your stuff in cash so you don't have to pay taxes. Mm. They're looking for ways to watch over your money huh. and make sure you pay your fair share. Huh. That's kind of interesting. 
And a change in currency just might help. Something I want to read. Some of you might be familiar with the book Evangelism. Are you page 63? Evangelism. Some of you are. Again, I always say, if I read something you don't think is biblical, challenge me on it. I'll be glad to talk with you about it. Because I think it's so very important, the principle here. Evangelism 63 says this. Is digital currency getting a sign of the end? And notice this right here. The very means that is now so sparingly invested in the cause of God and that is selfishly retained will in a little while, listen church, be cast with all idols into the moles and the bats. Listen, money will soon depreciate in value very suddenly. Very suddenly. See, but it shouldn't happen to you. Because God's promises in His Word, He'll not do anything unless He warns, right? It's people first. But, you know, you can talk about it. You can see it on TV. And then we go, uh, you know. When it happens, it could happen very suddenly here. Depreciating value very suddenly. We've watched it come and we go. Well, interest rate goes down. Interest rate out of the, the windows. It seems like to me, with all the information that's out there, all the thousands and thousands of churches and millions and billions of Christians, it seems, and the message of warnings that's going and going, that surely we would be ready for the coming of Jesus. Surely we would be ready for that great day when he shall come. But another book I truly love and love to read is, is very you know, historical, and it, it brings a prophecy that really opens it up. It doesn't change what the Bible has already said about it. The Great Controversy. Page 38 says this. Now remember, if I just ask the question, do you think the world is really ready for the coming of Jesus now? you think he's really ready? And one time a guy would say, yes or no? In other words, no debate, yes or no? He'd say, oh, most people say, no, I don't believe. Great Controversy says this, 38. The world is no more ready to credit the message for this time than were the Jews to receive the Savior's warning concerning Jerusalem. Remember A.D. 70? Jerusalem was what? Was surrounded, was destroyed, burnt to ground, no stone left upon the other, millions lost their lives. It was a horrible nightmare. But there was time, time and time and time and kind of the warning was given and given and given, but people would not listen to it. It says now we are no more ready to, right now for this time. The message that the world is soon to come to an end. Let me just be a little, what they say sometimes when you talk about people's money and different things, you went to meddling, something. Yeah. They talk about a lot of things, but don't talk about money. Seven Testimonies 56 says this, He, God, calls upon those who have money in the bank to put it into circulation. Hmm. I wonder why. By giving of our substance to the sustained God's work, we show in a practical manner that we love him supremely and our neighbor as ourself. I want that to make sense as we give to the cause of Christ. We're giving, right? Because we love our neighbor. We love the cause of Christ. And we're willing to support that and we're willing to give it. And it's better in the bank of heaven than it is in any bank here on earth. Does that, that make sense? Because one day, like I say, you'll wake up and you won't have it there. You've counted on it all your life. That's when, many, that's when the uh, suicide rate will go way up. It always has in, in ages past. When all of a sudden they thought they had something, next day they get up, they have nothing. That, that was their life. That's what they wanted, but it didn't last. But God says, I'm going to take care of that. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 20, the Bible says this, In that day, Isaiah 2, verse 20, In that day. Do you like that when it starts out, in that day? What day could it be talking about? Maybe the coming of Jesus, or in that day. Or the signs that tell us that we're, we're getting close to that time. You know, to go to church and, and, and somebody just, you know, put us to sleep with what's happening in there. Or, or Joe Blow's having a party over here. We're going to meet over here for this. And we're going to go do all this. I'm not saying any of that is all wrong. I'm saying we're too close to the coming of Jesus. The bottom is falling out of the world that we live in right now. That we've come to love and appreciate in this country. And all those things that we thought it was our freedoms. They're, they're gone. Why well, say they're going to be? They're really gone. They've worked around all of these things. 
We knew that for years. Great controversy said that, right? It's talked about the Constitution, right? United States, right? It's every, everything will be repudiated. It'll, it'll be, that means they're going to work around. Not throw it out, but just to work around every one of them. And we find that the health crisis just worked around every one of them. Are you still with me? Just something called the health crisis. And so you all your governors and different ones too, they just implement some kind of a health crisis and then that just alleviates everything. That just overflows. And they can do what they want to do with you. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold. Notice, that's his treasures of gold and silver for self, which they made. Hmm. Why? They're going to, why are they going to cast them? Because they're of no value. The time will come when the all oh, is valuable. Gold's going up. Silver's going up. Oh, everything's going up. Get a hold of the guy that's talking that way and say, are you a salesman? Somebody's not with me. You're going to make money, aren't you? If I Okay. The Bible says here they made each one for himself to worship. Going to here cast it to the moles and to the bats again. It seems that the, the testing time, in my opinion, the testing time is, is here. I think always before, maybe it's not as a church, sometimes we make a mistake. We'll say the testing time is coming. How many times you hear? It kind of lets us off of the hook. The testing time is coming. We're in the testing time. Amen. You're going to be tested to what kind of a Christian, what kind of relationship that you have. And I can't hang on to somebody else's relationship. I have to have my own. I have to be able to stand. They say, though the heavens fall. Only by the grace of God. What kind of relationship do I have with Jesus Christ? I've often said sometime in Adventism, sometime here even Behold the Lamb, sometime we spend an awful lot of time on current events, things that are happening in here, and sometime we forget to balance it with I love Jesus. Amen. You've got to balance it because all this other information we're talking about going right now will not save you, will not get you there in a time of trouble. But your relationship is in the hand of Jesus and you know it's secure. You're going to make it. And then all this other stuff is really a plus to understand and to know. But man, I'm saying right now, if you have one or the other. You know, not, let's not spend so much time watching this video and that video and what he said and what she said right here. Spend time in the Word of God. It said, God said, I love you. And God says, I'm coming again. He said, I'm going to receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. But he said, now I've come to get you and where are you at? You're out over here to, to, to lunch somewhere. This is no time. Time is running out. You know that. I know that. We have to check our own. Doesn't the Bible say examine your own self? I'm not trying to examine in you. I'm not trying to judge in you. I have no business doing that. I'm fighting for eternal life myself between me and God. I have to look at my own life and say, God, help me. But I believe that events of vital importance are crossing the scene, the horizon, every day taking place all around us, and we need not be deceived that we're all right, that everything's all settled. Listen, when everything is all right and everything is all settled, it's when you're standing on that sea of glass. Isn't that right? When you're standing on that sea of glass, everything is all right. Everything's all good. You know, they always say, where there's life, there's what? Where there's life, there's hope. So that means things can be changing as it goes, right? There's, you know, it may be going good today, but we have to be careful. We don't let change directions. We've got to keep our eyes centered and focused upon Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about thinking we're okay when we're all wrong. I heard a guy say one time something about, are you a Christian? What does he say? I'm a, I'm a tree in the garden of God. Say, well, now, come on, I'm digging it. I'm a tree in the garden of God. But let me tree, tell you, a tree in the garden of God has to bear fruit. There's something. You can be a tree, but you remember the tree that was cursed? Jesus did the fig tree because it didn't what? Come on. It didn't bear fruit. It didn't bear the figs. So call yourself a tree. Call yourself a Christian. Call yourself everything's all right. Unless we're living a life based upon the word of God. Hmm. I'm just wanting you to think about it. Yeah, got to get some fruit in it. Mm -hmm. 
Bear fruit. That's what Jesus said. Bear fruit. Boy, I want to bear fruit for his honor and for his glory. Let's get past some of that. We've got time is just going by quickly. Cryptocurrencies, digital dollars, future of our money. I don't know anybody here, and I can't do it to say what, what's, what's the future of our, of our dollar. It looks suspicious, does it not now? It sounds suspicious. Politicians are talking fast. Some of them are not making sense. And some of them are lying. I'm saying that from an honest heart. I'm not trying to call them. They know a whole lot more than they're letting on. They're afraid to bring home the truth. You know, to me, will, will digital currency take the place of our little paper money? Will, will, is that going to happen? Huh? Well, it's interesting here. According to the bank, this is a little quote, according to the Bank of America Corporation, that's pretty big, isn't it? Bank of America Corporation. And this just came out a couple of days ago. The U.S. will likely move forward with its own digital currency with issuance occurring. Now, notice the, notice the dates. Between 2025 and 2030. See, the elitists, the global elitists, they have this 2030 set up. Don't they? they have a seven-year thing, the papacy, so on and so on. Let's just put it all together. There's some work going on behind the scenes that's as dirty as the devil himself. And we need to understand that. We're not trying to be ugly about it, but it's the truth. There is a plan. And, the, you know, the plan may be, well, it's going to be money over here. It's going to be a, a food over here, shortage. It's this kind of here. The devil doing his best to get rid of the people of God. It's that simple. Remember, it's getting rid of the people of God. You witness against him. And he doesn't want any witnesses. Bloomberg.com says this. That the Bank of America, as they question him, Bank of America says that it's inevitable. There will be a change in currency. Federal Reserve discussed developing a, a coin in a 35-page paper. See, there's all kind of councils and, you know, people getting together and all kind of this stuff is coming out. And usually we don't know it until it comes out a little bit and then we're kind of like shocked what's going on. Hmm. Digital money is exchanged using technologies, as we will know even now, some with smartphones and, and credit cards and you know, online business. Cryptocurrency exchange. Oh, my even when I seen this, I just knew it was. I just knew it was going to happen. Bill Gates, the future of money is digital currency. You know he has a lot to do with what goes on. We may not like it, but he does because he has a lot of money. He knows where to invest. He knows what to do before the bottom falls out of things because he's going to make money on it. Come on, somebody. You know, see, he's saying, oh, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Digital currency coming, you sure? Recently, the Federal Reserve released a discussion. They call it release a discussion papers that examine and they said we're going to examine the pros and the cons of, notice this, of a potential U.S. central bank digital currency. You notice how they want to do it? They want to what? Basically like a one world bank, central bank, where everything comes into it so they have the watchful eye on you. Hmm. That comes from CBDC we're talking about here, or 20, uh, 2022, this banking digital currency. The paper summarizes the current state of domestic payments system, discusses the different types of digital payment methods. Notice this, including, notice it, stable coins and other cryptocurrencies. Now, remember, that's what's been taking place before has been taken care of by private banks. Does that make sense? Private banks were able to do it, but now they're wanting to change it just a little bit to say, but now it would be by a central bank like the Federal Reserve. Interesting. 
you say, well, this it can't happen for a long. You realize over 90 countries already are looking into this. It's going to happen. Over 90 countries are already looking into, are exploring, launching their own CBDCs. But the problem, many people look at and say, if this stuff is all instituted and put together here in just a little short time, it says it's going to disrupt the global financial system. It's going to what? It's going to disrupt the global financial system. So there's always, sometimes there's good, sometimes there's bad with some of these things. Isn't that right? But we have to be aware it's a possibility. One guy said, one talking about gambling or investing in certain things. He said, don't invest any more than you're, you're, you're willing to lose. Does that make sense? Don't invest any more than you're willing to lose. Hey, man, I'm not willing to lose any of it. <laughs> don't lose with it. One federal governor, I won't mention his name, said it's, it's not sustainable for the U.S. to hold off pursuing a digital dollar at a time when competing economics uh, are moving ahead. Others say, and they point out, that many dollar transactions are already digital. Some in Washington, D.C., believe that the U.S., if we don't move ahead right now, we've got to move ahead right now. If we don't, man, we're going to lose our position in holding the global reserve currency. So everybody's got an axe to grind, you say. Things are happening, and it's moving, and different people are saying, hey, trying to encourage it and say, let's go ahead and let's get to it while we can right now. We're going to lose some other clout here in, in the world. And so we know for sure it's going to take because, you know, just a few days ago, President Biden signed an executive order, you know, that, that requires the U.S. government agency to assess the benefits and the risk of creating a central bank, digital dollar and other cryptocurrencies. Huh. And you know what? As soon as he did that, that one, uh, what is that, uh, uh, Bitcoin? Is there someone's Bitcoin? As soon as they, he brought that up and said, we're going to look into all this, uh, their stock went up. What was it, 10% or something? something like that? Right quick, it went up. People, the vultures ready right just to make that money. Hmm. But he's already signed the paper. Let's look into this. Let's find out what we need to do here to get this going. That order goes pretty deep. It goes past, it goes to the, the Treasury Department, uh, the Commerce Department, and uh, other key agencies to prepare reports. On, you know, they said, Repo prepare this report on future, future money. What's going to happen? And the role that cryptocurrencies will play. And we can, I think most of us here to think about looking at what's happening in the world today with the re recent sanctions uh, regime in place as a result of the war in Ukraine. A lot of things have changed. Yeah. They're saying it's imperative that we regulate the framework and get something in place. Because they're looking at something called inflation. They're looking at something called uh, uh, their, their debt, debit. And... Uh, They're saying, well, you know, we need to come up with something. And uh, I think, it, what was it, Reuters.com said that they, they're coming out with some kind of a white paper, bottom line, a new digital form of cash in your pocket. So I'm saying, all this stuff here just it confuses your mind. There's so much up, but you look at it and just say, everybody's working in different directions to see that this takes place. Don't be fooled. Don't just lay, lay back and say it's not going to happen. Especially when the Federal officials say, we are not ruling out anything yet. We're not ruling out what? Anything yet. That means they're going to go to streams, whatever it takes to try to get something to go. We do live in a global world. There's no doubt about it. We're all affected by, you know, right now, inflation prices rising up on, you know, in everything. Hmm. Big spending by the government. Oil, gas prices, and the possible food shortage. See, sometimes we're just thinking right now, well, this is just about money right here. We need to be thinking in terms of food before too long, possibly. Please be praying about it and, and thinking about what we need to do because of what's taking place in the world. 
And sometimes we say sooner or later, and I'm wondering if it might just be a little bit sooner. That there's a world economic, a, a maybe a physical disaster, something that's forecast in Scripture as we read in James chapter 5 and, of course, Revelation 18. We can read that and say, man, when is this time? Could we be at the edge of it right now? Could it be happening right now under our nose? Because the Bible talks about absolutely. Matthew 24, you know, there's going to be pestilence and earthquakes and there's going to be famine. There's different things in the land. And somehow we think that we've got wars and rumors of wars and people are sitting on edge. People are living in fear. Absolutely, people are living in fear right now of what's soon to take place. Men's hearts are failing them for fear of those things that are coming upon this earth. I say we need to be concerned but not fearful. We serve a God, I say, the second to none. Isn't that right? We serve a God that who still, what? He still sits on the throne as far as I'm concerned. I don't care what the devil has planned. I don't care what the new world order has in mind or all these bankers or whatever it might be. That, ah, God sets up or God overrules. Sometimes he'll say no. Praise God for that. He has a plan and his plan will be fulfilled. I'm, I'm, I'm sure of that based on his word. Even though many people, you know, our, even some of our scientists today, people who know some of the weaponry and things that are out there, some people say, well, we just need to push a button and let's kind of end part of this stuff. Here. But, but they don't know what they're saying. One scientist said this, an atomic scientist said this many years ago. He said it. He said, you may have read, he said, I'm a frightened man myself. All the scientists I know are frightened Frightened for their lives. Frightened for your life. I'm a frightened man. He understands what's out there and what a push of a button just might do. I'm frightened. Just as we mentioned there in Luke 21, 26, it says men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. We need to be aware of the things that are coming up on this earth, but again, aware who still sits in the, right, in the chair, right? Who's still right ahead of this world? We can certainly trust God. The editor of a Christian uh, Century magazine said this. He said, despair. Despair is creeping up on us. We are on a road that, road that leads to destruction, and destruction is drawing close. Hmm. So men's hearts are failing for what? For fear of those things that are coming, things that are already happening right now. It'd be nice to say, oh, we think they're going to quit. It's not going to happen. It's, no, I believe that the wheel is started. You know, we're ending in the end times, time of the end. And this may be the time it does not back up. If there's ever a little lull, what goes on here, you'll have multitudes of millions of Christians will say, oh, this is the age, the thousand-year millennium, all everything's going to be peace. Sudden destruction cometh, the Bible said. The Bible said it's going to wax worse and worse. It said it's going to get better. I wished it would. It's not going to happen. It's going to follow God's plan. Most of you remember Charles Lindbergh. Yeah. Said an article, he wrote it, I think, in Reader's Digest many years ago. Think about many years ago, he, he wrote this. It had to be, oh boy, 75 years maybe. 75 years ago, he wrote this. He said this, he underlined it the time is short. The time is short. Looking at the destruction already wrought, at the materialism growing on every side. And notice this, and the increasing bitterness and unrest throughout the world. It sounds like it's written for today, isn't it? Written, uh, unrest in the, the world today. The tremendous, notice this, the tremendous power of our latest weapons. A realist might conclude that many of us now, many of us now will see the start of a war which will end in more dark ages. It's not to frighten anyone. That's to wake us up a little bit. We're too used to it. Well, we hear this and that, and we kind of just dismiss it a little bit like it's going to go away. But why? Because it has before. The sun's come up, and the sun has set, and that's the way that it's going to be. No, it's different. This may be different. It moves us into the dark ages. We would say it's moving us to the end of the world. 
It's moving us to the end of the battle of Armageddon. The end of probation. Then what? We could say today, you think about a lot of the stuff that have its, has an impact in the world, around the world. And it got thinking about the, the, uh, Babylon many years ago. Remember the Tower, Tower of Babel? When it fell. Remember when it fell, it just didn't go down to the ground and just it lay there. When it fell, it, 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 it has things like you talk about it. There's wreckage to it. Kind of like a bomb that goes off. It throws things over here and over there. And so today, the Tower of Babel has fallen down. But the world is littered with its wreckage. Think about it. All those things. It's, it's all over the place. One, minute, one man in an article of the Christian Century, Middle Magazine, again, almost 75 years ago, said the same thing. He said, more than he knew for his time. Again, scientists themselves now proclaim that their science has reached a point in its development, listen carefully, where it becomes imperative, oh my, where it becomes, scientists say now it's become imperative to do something about man. I'm not so sure we don't see that playing out today. We just had COVID, right? Some of these other things. Come on, somebody think with me. There's many people in the world that think there's something needs to be done about man. The world is overpopulated. You're going to have to do what? Come on now. He's saying there's something going to have to be done about man. How many of us are prophesying doomsday? You know, fear factor. Most of us are very familiar with General Douglas Mac MacArthur. On the day Japan surrendered in a New York Times article, he said this. We've had our last chance. I'm sure he believed it. But maybe today you could say that to your brother or your sister. You've had your last chance. And could be rightly so. You've had your last chance. You played church all these years. You, you act like you love Jesus and you want heaven to be your home. You had your last chance, he said here. If we do not now devise some greater and more equitable system, Armageddon will be at the door. It's true today, truer than it was when it was said. And yet somehow we sense that it's not. It's going to continue to go on as it were. You remember that was the scoffers, didn't they? Oh, it's going to continue on just like it was. My dad said, my grandpa said, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. it seems that we are headed. It seems that we are in that path right now, the, uh, some dark days. But I say again, it's not a reason for us to fear. Even though dark days may be ahead, there may be time and there will be according to Scripture. But I love it when it says, you know, well, the, the food shortage is coming up. Isn't, isn't it Ukraine and Russia, do they supply like 30% of our wheat? Isn't that right? About? Man, that's going to be a big hurt in a matter of a few months. But I'm telling you right now, okay, we don't have time to get into it a little bit later on right in right here. Many of our farmers are not planting either because they can't get fertilizer from these countries. And it's not, they can't get fertilizer and they're not going to plant. It's only going to make it, the situation worse. But the Bible says what, Brother Mark? He said, your bread and water, your bread and water is going to be sure. Oh, you, some of us say, well, I want my steak and potatoes. I said, the Bible said your bread and water. Well, I like a little dessert afterwards. He didn't say anything about dessert. He said, your bread and water. And let me tell you, when you get hungry, bread and water is going to taste like dessert. You know it. Depending on how hungry you get. And not worry about that dessert. Oh, God, just give me water and some bread. It means your food is going to be. He's going to supply it for you. So don't be worrying about all of this stuff, even though we're talking about it. And you know it's going to take place. And, and, and listen, if you're going to make it to heaven, you will lose everything that you have on this planet. You're not going to take anything with you. Eventually, it's going to be taken. Why not put it on the altar now? Take, put it on the altar now and say, God, whenever you see fit, whenever you want it, here it is. That's what God's looking for today. He's looking for men and women who trust him enough and love him enough. Yeah, but what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You see what I'm saying? That, really, that's what. 
And, and, and we have that tendency. That's, it's humanism, right? What about God? God says, yeah, but I'm going to take care of you if you let me do it. Yeah. Don't come somebody, I'm, I'm going to save all this for the rainy day. You know, in, in heaven, there's not going to be any rainy days. Isn't that right? If there happened to be a little shower, he'll give you an umbrella. Come on now. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 164 says, When appearance seem most forbidding, things are seeing almost forbidding right now. Oh, man, oh, what if this happened? What? It says simply, fear not. Why? God knows your need. He has all power. He's in control of everything. And he'll never change his covenant. He's made a covenant with you. He's made a covenant with me. He's not going to break it, and God help me that I don't break my covenant with him. And if you've made that covenant with him, you need not worry. We've seen it in times past, even growing up, because we were poor and didn't have food sometime in the house. There was nothing in the cupboards. Nothing in the cupboards. And we're looking at each other, and we're looking at mom and dad like, what are, you, what are we going to do? And I can hear my mother say all the time, she kind of let out spiritually sometimes. Praise God for good mothers. She said, don't worry about it. God will supply. I said, yeah, but there's nothing in the cupboards, mom. God will supply. Well, I'm getting tired of hearing God will supply. I'm wanting some beans. Some of you know. As kids, you, 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 you're going you, to fight, but you want something. Mama, God, God will supply. Just hang on. Time and time again, Jan on the Warden Street, 812 West Warden Street in West Frankfort, where you delivered mail for three or four years. What was it? Several years, long time. I, I seen you then before I knew you. He knows the house. That's the house I was born in. Going by somebody. Mama go to the door, and one of the neighbors say, oh, goalie. Say, Mama, the goalie. Is it okay to call her goalie? Goalie. Oh. Say, we had a couple of ba- extra bags of groceries. We don't know how in the world. We'll never eat them. They'll just kind of spoil or something. We don't give them to you guys. Hey, well, you guys, woo! Man, go in there and tear into those things. And you know what? It didn't matter what it was. It wasn't no say, I don't like these veggies. I don't like this or that. Stand back. Don't let my brothers get in the way. That, that's mine over there. It's different when you're hungry. Isn't that right? But I'm telling you, that happened time and time again when somebody would show up at the door. There were angels of God. Even though we've seen our neighbor's face there, God used them to meet that need. And I've never forgotten that. I, I thank God for that. Paul testified. A couple of minutes left. Stay with me. Paul testified, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. Notice he said, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. So you're going through a mess today. You're not sure you're, how you're going to get out. Maybe the, the wife is gone or the husband's gone or somebody passed away. Your job's gone. You don't know what to do. Changes are going to have to take place. You know that they need to take place. You know you need to do things differently. You've done them all wrong all your life. Now you want to make them right. Things are going haywire. But you know, and Paul said it when he said it. Pray, oh, Lord, heal my infirmities. And God said what? My grace is sufficient. We don't spend time on that for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. He looks at you. He looks at me today. So, oh, Kenny, you're so weak. Bless your heart. You need extra help. Man, let me help you. You can't make it without me. The devil will crush you. But I can fight him off for you. Oh, therefore I take pleasure. Paul said, therefore, oh, I take pleasure in infirmities. Lord, help me to take some pleasure in infirmity rather than gripe and complain about it. And somebody reproaches me. Somebody gets on to me. Somebody says something I don't want. I tell you, Lord, help me to be able to see it through your eyes. When persecution comes, distress for Christ's sake is talking about here. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Oh, praise God. Telling you, it's time to get ready to go home. Whether the currency is going to change or whether it's not. We can go into a lot more detail. I'm not going to do it. Our time has run out. But right now is the day that we make a decision for Christ. We're going, to, we're going to depend on the world. We're going to say what's happening in the world. We're going to take the side of the world. Or we're going to take the side of, of Jesus Christ. How many like to say, just raise your hand today before I have prayer with you, before we close our I want to stand on the side of Christ. I know there's no other help. There's no other way but on the side of Christ. I can't make it without Christ. The world is falling apart. 
all these things that are happening, I can't even, I can't even put them together. It's just going to be too heavy duty anymore. But I do know that God is sure. I know that God is just. I know that he is fair. And he said, I am what you are my child and I'm going to take care of you. I think you've committed to there. I want Jesus to take care of me today, to lead, guide, and direct. God, help me to see your footprints that are out there and that I would follow into your footsteps. I won't go to the right. I won't go to the left, but I just want to follow your footprints. Oh, Lord, help us today. Let's pray, shall we? Loving Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you for those beautiful promises in the hour that we're living in. Seemed like so much devastation when you said there'd be wars and rumors of wars and famine and pestilence and earthquakes and floods and fires fires and we're talking about billions and trillions of dollars and you know wars are going on by perfectly good buildings it can never be built back trillions and trillions and trillions Lord we've entered into a mess we need you to be our God we want to be your people so we pray that we will read your word and that we'll follow your word by your grace and by your strength. And that we will come forth more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello and welcome back. I'm sure it's very possible that you've never fully thought about some of the ramifications of our switching to a central world digital banking system could produce. I guarantee that those who are in power over us have. They could certainly add to what Pastor Kenny presented today with much more information, there's no doubt in my mind. But what we have heard today is enough for us to see how this movement most certainly could be another piece of the puzzle of circumstances that needs to be in place for the final moments of Earth's prophetic history to play out. But always remember, friends, God has warned us what is to come so that when it arrives, we can be assured that He is still with us and that He is allowing these changes to occur to draw this great controversy between Him and His angels and the devil and His angels to a final close. Amen for that. Friends, if you'd like to have a copy of today's message, it is available now to you on DVD for a love gift of just $8 or more. Just give us a call here in the United States at 618-942-5044. That is Central Time. Or you may also write in your request to Behold the Land Ministries, P.O. Box 2030, here in Illinois, 62948. Or you may email us at contact at beholdthelandministries.com or visit us on our website at beholdthelandministries.com. And we encourage you to hit that subscribe button on our Behold the Land Ministries YouTube channel. Until next time, friends, may our precious Lord continue to richly bless you.